a few different things with regard to this. I mean, for flight, you kind of hit it already. I mean, gliding, uh, to develop feathers that are, are good for gliding, I mean, you don't have to have flight right away. You can just have a, a bird-like animal that's good at gliding at first, and, and bats have developed flight as well. Um, and then from that, just better and better glides, uh, you can just progressively develop organisms that can glide a little further, and they're going to do that by producing uh, some amount of downward lift. And then it just eventually gets to a point where they can actually do like powered sustained flight or whatever. But we know that, like we know theropod dinosaurs had feathers and they had asymmetrical feathers just like flight. Now that doesn't mean that they were, like the feathers weren't originally adapted for flying. I mean, there there are many, many cases where we can see that a trait um, or like an organ is, it has been modified to do something new that it didn't do in its in its ancestor. There's some really cool research on birds and how uh, <clears throat> and how like the flight mechanism sort of uh, may have evolved in raptors. So what they find is what birds will do is if they try to run up something that's really steep, they flap their wings really quickly. And like chicks that can't actually fly yet do that. But it does help them get up because I, I don't know if it's just like the, the momentum of it helps or the actual amount of thrust they're able to produce. Although they can't fly, it does basically make it easier for them. <clears throat> and like skeletal analysis has shown that raptors, the, the type of range of flexibility they had with their arms, like the way it would have moved, is exactly the same mechanism that you see uh, birds do when they fly. It's kind of like a butterfly stroke, almost in a way. Um, so th that just kind of gets you to like they have the feathers in the first place, uh, and then we have sort of like the the biomechanism or whatever we want to call it that isn't that isn't it, it's not the same thing as flight. But flight hasn't wildly changed from that. It's just that the animals are now lighter and they have much stronger breast bones or breast uh like pecs or whatever um <clears throat> and then you so, know the so, gliding but, but, turns into like sustained is, flight anyways sorry go ahead oh no i'm sorry um but you know like the raptor you say it has the same mechanism so did that just happen by chance that it just had this mechanism or does the evolutionary well, process have a have a a goal in mind because no, there's no me, goal. It, just, it doesn't well that's what I mean. It just seems so improbable. Well, I mean, so how do I say this? Um so you can argue that wait, 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 you're telling me that the raptors just happen to have the same kind of arm dynamic that works for flight. That means it has to have been premeditated or something like that. Well, I mean, no. a lot of it would you would think would have to be premeditated because it, it's it's it so It does look that way. But flight has evolved four separate times, five separate times, and each type of flight is completely different, right? Like bats bats accomplish it <laughs> by having enormous uh webbed fingers basically. Um insects do it in a completely different way. The pterosaurs did it by having an absurdly long pinky finger and then webbing that stretched to their ankles. Uh, the birds did it with flight feathers and by fusing their fingertips together to make, to have a really rigid and strong, uh, whatever, arm. Um, so there's, like, if, to me, the fact that it evolves independently in different ways shows that you can just stumble upon a way of living that is that, that is advantageous, right? And it, it comes from pre-existing traits that just happen to work well for this future thing. Like I said, there, there are, are lots of other examples. I, I'm probably not going to be able to remember one off the top of my head where an organ is very clearly derived from something like in its past that didn't have that function, but it happens to work for this other function. And the other thing we have to keep in mind is that no animal is perfect at doing anything. 
it just works pretty good for all that. You can always imagine a way in which it could work better. So Evolution is just working with, you know, the cards that it's dealt and doing a pretty good job. Okay. Yeah, I was I was just kind of wondering what, what your answer would be. I mean, I've always, you know, wondered that. I've, I've thought a lot about, like, what would an insect do with a 16th or a 32nd of a wing? How could that help them? You know, in what way or, you know, it just, it just, it, it's, it seems so wildly improbable that it would, that it would evolve flight eventually from that. I mean, it. Yeah, the insect one, the insect one is weird because uh, we don't have transitional insect fossils for like, for like flight or anything like that, that I'm aware of. But the, the insects developed that so, so, so long ago. I mean, there were. I, th I think we probably had flying insects before any other animals were even living on land. So that's an extremely long time ago. That's like pushing 360 million years ago or something like that. Okay, yeah, I was just kind of curious what what your answers would be. I, I don't have a certain point or anything I was getting to or anything. I was just, you know, just curious of what, what you thought. I really, I do enjoy your uh, flat Earth lives. Those are pretty good. Um, yeah, they're obviously. they're they're pretty interesting. <laughs> well, thanks for talking to me.